All right. How's it going, everyone? Uh, thanks for joining me on a new episode of the Music Reader Podcast. My name is Josh. And, uh, yeah, I know, long time no see, right? But anyways, um, <clears throat> yeah, we're just going to go at it with the new album review. And uh, it's going to be the first one since October. Um, I've kind of explained, I guess, the past couple of episodes that I've, I've put out uh, why I've been kind of just been more sporadic and whatnot. But uh, a, a few things, I guess, I've since I've been away or just not uploading as much um, that I've maybe just come to realize about maybe mistakes about how I went about the podcast uh, from the very get-go, from the very beginning when I did it in, I believe, 2020 already um <clears throat> I've, I've just seen some stuff that you know maybe i just was uploading some reviews or just reviewing some music that maybe i wasn't so hot on just talking about um but i won't get too into that um but from what i've, I've seen the past couple of uploads have done quite well um compared to like some other stuff that i you know put out so um, whatever I was doing on these recent talking tracks, um, perhaps maybe be a difference, but I don't want to bore anyone with that stuff, but I think I would want to continue doing stuff like that as well. But I also want to bring back album reviews and, uh, this, uh, this album review is just going to be an album that, uh, I think I want to talk about and, uh, it's going to be episode 71. So yeah, this for 71st, uh, album review. It's going to be over Mahal by Tori Moi. Uh, this album was released on April 29th, so it's been about a month. It's uh, self-produced by Chaz Bear, uh, formerly known as Chaz Bundick, the mastermind behind Tori Moi. Some consider him the, one of the founders of Chill Wave. Um, I've talked about some of his music in the past. I've given you know some thoughts here and there over the artist, but this is going to be the first official album review, the first time I talked about him uh officially was like on a worth the listen which those kind of have not done at all i don't think i'm going to be doing those anymore uh but nonetheless uh yeah this is uh the latest project i'm not sure what uh, what number this is album wise mainly because he has some mixtapes thrown in and some interesting projects that aren't officially albums uh but this is the latest one and it's been since 2019 that's official album has been released uh, under the name Tori Moi. Uh, just some brief background. Um, he's an American singer, songwriter, record producer, also graphic designer. Very multi talented, this guy is. Uh, he's credited with being one of the first pioneers of Chill Wave, like I said earlier in the early 2010s. From South Carolina, that's pretty interesting um, as well. Chill Wave is a subgenre for those that don't know synth pop and indie pop that emerged in the late 2000s with uh, the summer of Chill Wave that emerged in 2009. I think I probably took that from somewhere, but I think that's kind of when uh, there was a boom of uh, critical acclaim amongst like the indie blogosphere. The three main artists that are responsible of that sort of indie uh, Chill Wave boom uh, were Neon Indian Tori, Neon Indian Tori Ma, and Washed Out. But all acts still somewhat active. I'd say probably the least active being Neon Indian. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, they're still somewhat relevant. The genre is characterized as having like a retro electronic sound with elements of psychedelia and dreamy aesthetics, mainly achieved through synthesizers. Uh, it's pretty evident when you turn it on. Also, um, with elements of like mellow vocals in much of the majority of the genre, uh, that are really important to the text overall texture of the music. Uh, chill wave is also seen as being, you know, somewhat related to chill or uh, vapor wave as well. If uh, anyone's here is into vapor wave, uh, it's seen uh, by many this that study contemporary music as a genre that evolved from like dream pop and shoegaze. So they're somewhat related. Uh, some see the official start of the genre also being all the way back in two thousand seven. Uh, from the release of Panda Bear's Person Pitch, which now that I look into it, I had no idea Panda Bear was maybe making music that long ago that would have been their third release, because I guess I only ever cared about Animal Collective. But yeah, I thought that was interesting. Uh, but nonetheless, more about Tori and Wall. Uh, the album that really stuck out to me was Anything Return, which was released in January 2022, 2013 by... Uh, by Tori Ma on Car Park Records. 
Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. If there is such a thing as like an exclusively hipster label, it would probably be Car Park. Um, it's, you could probably group that sort of label with a lot of bands that were pretty hot in the indie realm uh, to that label, and maybe still today. The bands that I enjoy and appreciate sometimes, <clears throat> much of the bands that I enjoy and appreciate are typically on there. The prominence of the overall vibe is noticeable, though, uh, on this album, Anything Will Turn. It was an album that aimed to be more accessible, according to uh, Tori Moi himself. His prior releases to this were probably more true to the Choi genre, though. So if you wanted to listen to anything that was like classical chew gaze, uh, maybe something like Causers of This uh, or Underneath the Pine. Uh, but now it's just gravitating towards like some more current stuff that Tori Ma has released. Uh, back in 2019 was Outer Peace, an album that I think I heavily anticipated. Uh, Ordinary Pleasure uh, was one of the tracks on there that I think was a lead single. Till this day, it's still nice. Uh, it's a catchy indie pop track. Uh, addicting refrain on there. I also feel similarly uh, with the track Freelance. It's a good cut. Um, I didn't really enjoy discovering some of the newer tracks, though. Uh, or some of the other tracks, um, again, such as Miss Me featuring Abra. Um, some oddly recorded and performed vocals there. Who I Am probably was one of the tracks that held up the best, I will say, though. So I did rediscover some tracks that um, I can say, oh, I should probably go back and listen to this stuff more. Um, the track's bubbly, energetic, and catchy. Um, and then some of the EDM electronic elements really shine and exhibit Chaz Bear's strengths. And then tracks such as Monte Carlo um, have a warm R&B flavor to them. Uh, and it just kind of... It's just an example of a track being quite colorful and rich, which I'd say overall the album was somewhat kind of like summed up to being. It was quite colorful and rich at many points. Um, this new this new album, though, Mahal, after a few listens, um, I'm really liking uh, what direction uh, the direction Tori Ma went on here overall. I, th I will say I think I like it more than Outer Peace, and I would like to maybe see Tori Ma continue going in this sort of direction um a lot of different point on a lot of different points on mahal uh i was just reminded of past work and then just Chaz going with uh maybe just similar uh themes that have worked in the past and maybe just improving on uh, some of them even going back to an album from all the way back from 2015, What For, uh, some of these, uh, some of some of the tracks that maybe stood out, such as maybe Buffalo or Lily, you can easily hear on Mahal. Um, not too much in terms of like relating to anything in return, um, but definitely still some hints of the classical chill wave sound um, that he started with. Um, opening up with the medium, this, uh, this album, uh, this album, it just really hits it off with the grandiose introduction. Um, and then also this was, I think, produced or also composed by, uh, the front band of Unmortal or uh, Unknown Mortal Orchestra, a related artist. And the, the influence really shines through on here. There's a heavy presence and drum groove together. Uh, that kind of remind me of like a Lenny Kravitz record. Um, so it, there's really just a nice jam that opens up everything on this album. Some nice live instrumentation. Love the crisp and clear cymbals that cut right through as well. Uh, the track can be chaotic at times, and I will say that's an overall theme. There's uh, interludes pretty much at the tail end of every track that uh, are quite chaotic and don't really relate to much else, but it kind of reminds me of the last or just in general of the music of the Spirit of the Beehive um, and how they go about uh, a lot of their music. And I think it's uh, maybe a nice little uh, hint of influence there. I'm not sure. Um, and yeah, The Medium, great track to open up the album. Um, it's quite different from a typical Toro Imoir, a Toro Imoir cut, especially more recent ones. Um, and then... Uh, uh, the, that unknown mortal orchestra influence is right there. It's quite evident, and especially going into the next track, it kind of sticks 
and then just has a nice transition or helps the track accomplish a nice transition to uh, one of the other great tracks on this album goes by fast um, here there's a lovely fat boomy bass accompaniment that rep- that resonates through the mix really nicely um, with the, the overall there's like a bit of psychedelic flavor with how bears vocals mix so lightly with the mix uh, love the wonky sax melodic interlude bits um, and like I said earlier it sounds a little bit like a no mortal orchestra track love the lax compound time signature as well uh, lovely lush instrumentals that swell at many points so uh, definitely one of the highlights on this album uh, didn't really care too much about anything until we get to Postman um, which is one of the lead singles off of this and probably one of the better cuts too on the album the grooviness of the drum track is awesome the print slash funk influence uh, shines on this track and I think this this track just really exemplifies uh, the talent that Chaz has to uh, really, uh, I guess, embody other influences and just execute quite well. It's unique in the sense that it leaves a lot of like the dreamy ethereal norms of Bear's music while also confidently presenting uh, Tori Ma in an interesting light. So yeah, just didn't really know he had it in him with Postman, but he executed it quite well. The loop was really nice as well. Um, there's a great transition for Postman into it. Um, and yeah, it kind of just paints Tori and Moi in a new light. The tracks complement each other nicely. Uh, I love the accompanying lead guitar during the staying in the loop refrain. Uh, still, there's a f- slight funk flavor, I'd say. Um, however, it's just kind of presented with like a different swagger and vibe. The track generally sounds like what you'd expect. Uh, some of the past work that Bear did in the past evolving to some sort of newer fusion of funk and rock, I guess, um, that only maybe Tori Ma can, like, come up with. It's it's an interesting sound. Um, Last Year was the next track. I will say it's a bit of an outlier so far in the context of the other tracks. Um, I do love the mobile melodic bass lines that guide this track. It's interesting, probably just not my favorite overall. Um, the next track, Mississippi, after that, I think was uh, a, a good track. Uh, the track definitely hits on a lot of vintage slash classical flavor to it aesthetically, almost like a a weird Pink Floyd S type of track. It just sounds like a trip from the past that could have possibly fit in like an old '70s movie. Possibly, I'm not sure if I'm going back too far or like not far enough. You know, this blends in nicely with the next track as well, with the Spirit of the Beehive type interlude. Um, This is a great example of that happening into the Clarity, which is probably one of the better tracks. Um, I love the jamminess guided by the rhythmic section on here. Again, there's some lovely etherealness uh, with some colorful accents, such as the fluttering flutes. Aesthetically, it's dreamy, haunting. <clears throat> the feature vocals sound appropriately implemented on here as well. Definitely dug that bit there. It's a lovely composition overall. I dig the effects that are thrown onto the vocals as well. It really makes the music a lot more interesting. Um, after that, though, we kind of hit you know a more of like a dip in the overall enjoyment that I have this album with foreplay. Uh, the lighter synth melody thrown in the interlude on here, I could have maybe lived without. It just sounded a little bit offsetting uh, or off-putting to me. The track can maybe lose some luster as the interlude drags as well. Um, so it, it just kind of felt, uh, you know, a little uh, a little unfocused, I guess, and abstract. I know that was probably the intent. It just didn't really kind of work for me. And then there's like an odd abrupt transition to like a pin back style sort of instrumental, the band pin back. Um, but after that, we get an interesting cut with Deja Vu that hits on a lot more psychedelic flavor here with some interesting colors present on here. Seems like it attempts to be poppy, hooky, at least more so than the rest of the album thus far, with the exception of The Loop, probably one of the more accessible tracks on here. Uh, way too hot. Probably one of the least interesting tracks after uh, after Deja Vu. Um, it, it just doesn't seem to captivate me that much. The drum track doesn't seem to have the same effect like in the rest on much of the other songs on the album. Um, just not a lot of energy going on. 
And yeah, I will say that this album ends on a high note, especially with the second to last track, Millennium. I did enjoy it um, quite a bit. There's some classic Tori Moss sounds here as well, um, on, especially on the more instrumentally focused sections, especially how it opens up with some bright quarter note uh, keyboard hits. Um, really think that captivates the listener right off the bat. Some impressive hi-hat work on here that really helps solidify the groove. Um, and then also some lovely gritty synth melodic interludes um, that give the track a lot of attitude. And then also there's some nice disco flair that I appreciate on this track as well. And then after that, Days in Love, um, I will say it wasn't a huge highlight for me, but the first time I listened to it, it was a bit special because it reminded me uh, a bit of the live in instrumental flair that Tor Imwa has, especially with playing live as a band. Uh, that was somehow captured on this recording, especially the attitude with the live band that I, I appreciate um, hearing when I've seen this artist a few times. Um, it's just on here on this track, and it's really cool. Um, I will say there's some 80s fusion that was hinted on here with like some psych psychiness as well that was uh, present on much of the album, but I could have done uh, I could have done without the the 80s fusion a bit. Um, aims to have like this sort of grandiose ending, which I can understand how that was decided on, but I uh, maybe could have lived without it because, um, you know, the, the, some of the more bigger moments don't really hit on this album and it, it really shines on the subtleties and more relaxed moments. Um, but nonetheless, not a bad way to end the album. And yeah, I would just will say that this, uh, this last track really captured something really cool with how the that anything in return era uh, when he was playing with the live band, how he was able to keep the essence of those uh, heavily produced like electronic tracks into a live band and make the tracks even better. Uh, yeah, it kind of just days and love kind of just captures that. So yeah, really cool song. Um, overall, the album is good. Um, and I, I wasn't so hyped on this. Postman and Staying in the Loop didn't really hit with me too ha too hard when um, I heard them as singles. They kind of just sounded like oddball Tori Ma tracks that he was obviously in experimenting on. But um, in the context of this album, they're really great, and um, they the the album doesn't really have one overall sound every track has a unique character to it which i really appreciate and it kind of just shows that <clears throat> there was some uh some thought that went into every single track i will i won't say there's there's really not much filler on here the, if there is filler it's because maybe there's a little bit too much creativity that made a song sound too abstract or odd um but yeah seven out of ten on this one probably what i'm and most recent memory, one of my favorite albums that they put out. Um, I don't think it holds up to like the greatest Tori Ma albums, but this definitely uh, is a nice, a nice project for the fans. Um, if you really dig his music, I, I will say, yeah, if you're familiar with Tori Ma, I can't really say you will leave this being all that dissatisfied. <clears throat> Uh, uh, listeners that aren't too familiar with the styles and music of uh, Chaz Bear might be a little confused, uh, especially if they only know the bigger albums like uh, Causers of This or Anything Return. Uh, and it might be of a head scratcher, but I think people that appreciate this sort of uh, indie rock fusion experimental style, such as fans of maybe Unknown World Orchestra or Spirit of the Beehive, will really appreciate this album perhaps. Um, and I think that's maybe the audience in general for this sort of thing. Um, I'm not sure <clears throat> if uh, who else would be picking this up, but I would recommend anyone just to give this album a chance. So yeah, good album, solid project by Tori Ma. Um, that's pretty much the conclusion of the review. It's a 7 out of 10 um, if I had to rate it. So yeah, thanks for sticking with me to the end of this. Uh, hopefully I will have more content up soon, but thank you for tuning in and I'll see you later.